Peace and blessings, everyone. I am Michael Bernard Beck with the founder of Agape International here in Los Angeles and Global Reach through live streaming. As we begin, I invite all of us to at this moment just take a really nice deep breath and release and allow yourself to be right here and right now with me. Pull your attention away from the future, pull your attention away from the past, and to have your attention right here, being aware that as I'm speaking and providing a level of activation under my words for you, that there are other individuals who are on this particular class. So there's a, there's a community here that has emerged, and this community is building a very powerful field of love and beauty and intelligence that all of us are participating in. And this field is greater than the influence of the world. It's greater than the news reports. It's greater than the collective beliefs of all of society. That this field that we're now co-creating in this beautiful community is a field of intelligence and the beauty and love and prosperity and wealth and abundance. And we're in that field now. So being in this field, I invite you to turn within for a moment as we evoke this presence and this power and this love. We evoke this divine intelligence. We evoke the presence which is never an absence through the vitalizing feeling tone of gratitude and thanksgiving and appreciation so that our perceptual windows are cleansed from the inside out. And we begin to see that all around us is a presence of love and beauty, another name for God. We recognize this presence and become so unified with this presence that we're able to say, I am. I am what thou art and thou art what I am. No distance or separation whatsoever. And the word that is being spoken is the word of the I am. Naming these precious moments together, magnificent to the tearing down of any seeming stronghold to negativity, any stronghold of anything that would hinder, delay, block, or obstruct the fullness of life from expressing through us right now. I embrace the idea that something wonderful is happening and it's happening to, through, and as us right now. These are great moments together. And I let it be now and forever. And so it is. Amen. The universe will answer every question that you ask. And we're learning to not ask disempowering questions. We're asking questions that empower us. In the life visioning process, we begin like this. We establish ourselves in a field of meditation, surrounded by love, and then we ask. And I'm going to go through this with you, but I'm going to give it to you first then we're going to practice it. We ask, <clears throat> what is the highest vision for my life? What is God's idea of itself as my life? What's trying to emerge in my life? What gift is trying to unfold in my life? We ask these kind of questions because we know when we ask a question sincerely, the universe through its law will answer those questions. And as we begin to listen with our inner ear, the ear beyond the ear, we begin to listen. We start to feel and see and sense a vision for our life. How do we know it's from the spirit? the higher self, or just something we're making up. Through practice, you're able to tell the difference. If it's just from the limited ego, sometimes it's just up for you. If it's from the spirit, what the vision will entail will benefit everyone. Whenever it comes from the spirit, no one's ever hurt, and no one ever loses, everyone wins. If it's from the ego, you may win, but somebody else may lose. So we ask, what is God's idea of itself as my life? 
what's trying to emerge? And then the second question we ask, what is it, what must I become in order to manifest the vision I'm now beginning to articulate? What must I become? This is the question that keeps us on our growing edge. We're always changing. We just want to participate in our own change. We want to, we want to change for the better. So when we ask, what must I become? We're saying, where must I grow? Where must I evolve in order for this vision to manifest? Because we can't have what we're not willing to become in consciousness. We can't have what we're not willing to become. It's an impossibility. We may be able to get something temporarily, but we will not be able to hold on to it because vibrationally we haven't become it. So we ask, what must we become in order to manifest the vision? Third question, what do I have already that can be used in service to the vision I'm now learning to articulate? What do I already have? To he or she who has, more shall be given. But to he or she who has not, even that which they have shall be taken away. So you begin to feel what you already have. You think about the resources that are already in your life. You, be, you begin to consider the talents and gifts and the capacities that you already have. So you begin to feel that you are a haver. You're being and having. That becomes your dominant vibration. Being and having. So then the law responds to that. And your beingness expands and your having is multiplied. Does that make sense? I think it does. Now, <clears throat> the next question we ask, and we're going to do this, by the way. What must I let go of that no longer serves me? What used to serve but doesn't serve me now that I'm willing to let go of? Now, we ask these questions without censorship or denial or blame or shame. This is an awareness exercise. We're just asking a question and becoming aware. What no longer serves me? What habits no longer serve me? What speech? What kind of conversations? What kind of food? It doesn't serve me anymore. It doesn't help me. I don't need to do this anymore. We just look at it. And then after we ask those questions, what's the highest vision for my life? What must I become? Number three, what do I have? Number four, what must I let go of? Number five, we begin to tap into the sacred yes. Dynamic willingness. We begin to open ourselves up and feel the vibratory feeling of willingness. So that you know any time in your life, in order for you to accomplish anything, you had to be willing. You had to say yes. You had to move out of the comfort zone of maybe, and I don't know. Listen to this, because nothing good, nothing great has ever come from the comfort zone. Our willingness, our yes, our sacred yes, takes us out of the zone of comfort. We embrace yes. Then, after that, we evoke the presence. So, what's the vision? You articulate it. What must I become? Number two. What do I have in my house? Number three. What must I let go of? Number four. Activate my divine willingness. Number five. Dynamic uh, willingness and yes, yes and the evocation of a dynamic prayer. That's 
what visioning is. It becomes a dynamic practice. I want you to put your feet firmly on the ground. I want you to take everything out of your hands. So you just tense up your body a little bit and just squeeze everything. Take a deep breath and just release. And once you have your back straight without being rigid, and begin to close your eyes but listen to my voice. As we enter into a mini life visioning session. As you close your outer eye and you hear the sound of my voice, I want you to remember a time in your life in which you felt the vibration of unconditional love. That's number one. Perhaps it came through the touch of a grandparent, a friend, a lover, an associate, a pet. You just tap into the feeling tone of unconditional love. Feel what it feels like. If it's difficult, imagine what it feels like. And begin to feel what unconditional love feels like. It's a field of love and total givingness. I'm going to invite you to take a breath and when you hear me clap my hand, you're going to multiply this feeling times 10. Breathe in, 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 hold, the release, multiply times 10. The feeling tone of unconditional love. Take another breath, breathe in, a little bit more air in. The feeling tone of unconditional love multiplied times 50. You're in a field of safety and a field of unconditional love. Yes. We're gonna do it once again and we're gonna multiply times 100. Breathe in. A little bit more air in. Suspend it. Release. Times 100. So you're living in a field now of unconditional love, magnified 10, 50, 100, exponential growth in the feeling tone of love and safety and well-being. Now in this field, we're now going to enter into a, a very empowering question. I want you to ask, what is God's idea of, its, of itself as my life? Or begin to ask, what is the highest vision for my life? Or begin to ask, what's trying to emerge in my life right now? What great gift is trying to emerge in my life right now. Feel it in your bones. We're participating in the vision process by asking a question from a deep sense of love. What's the universe up to with my life? What's trying to, what's trying to be born? through me? What gifts, talents, and capacities are trying to emerge through me right now? Whether it is a sight or a sound, an image, a feeling. Don't judge it. Don't censor it. Feel into it and remember it. The universe is speaking to you. You're listening. You've made yourself available.
we go to stage three. What must I become? Ask this question. What must I become in order for the vision to manifest? What must I become? What is my growing edge? Where must I grow? Where must I change in order for this great vision to happen through me? Again, this is not to elicit guilt. It is just an awareness. What, where must I grow? What habits must change? Perceptions must change. What conversations must change? As we continue with what we must become, we just, we hold that space and we ask, what can I now let go of that no longer serves me? What no longer serves me that I'm willing to let go of? Habits, conversations, what no longer serves me. This is an awareness exercise. And very importantly, what do I already have that can be in service to the vision? What resources do I already have? What gifts and talents do I have? So I end up feeling right now that I have, that I, in a grand state of being, that I, are, that I have. Remember, to he who, and she who has more is given. What do you have? What resources do you have? What talents do you have that you might be sitting on, that might be latent, that might not be fully developed, but they're within you? Let's feel into these stages again. 
One, the feeling tone of unconditional love and safety. Two, what's the divine vision for my life? Three, what must I become in order to manifest this vision? Four, what do I already have that can be in service to the vision? Five, what must I let go of? Be with those now for just a moment. Let the universe speak to you. Now, feel into the vibratory frequency of willingness. Let us activate our sacred yes. Feel what yes feels like. Beyond no, beyond maybe, a soulful commitment. Feel into yes. Feel into willingness. If you've ever been willing to do or to be anything in life, feel into the frequency of willingness. And as we did earlier, take a breath. Let go. Multiply the feeling times 10. Willingness. Take a breath. Multiply it times 50. Willingness. I'm willing. I'm willing. Take a breath. A little bit more air in, please. Let go. The vibration of willingness is all about us. We become willing and we say yes to the vision. Give yourself permission. We say yes to our becoming. Becoming more, never less than our true self, we say yes. To the willingness, we say yes. The willingness to become, yes. The willingness to embrace what we have. Yes to letting go what no longer serves us. It begins with the willingness. Where there is willfulness, there's a wall. Where there's willingness, there's a way. Yes. Feel into that right now. And from this dynamic consciousness of willingness, a beginning articulation of a sacred and divine vision for our life, the life that is activating the divine design within us, a divine and magnificent destiny within us. Everyone has a magnificent destiny. The word is spoken for each being in the sound of my voice, with a full vitalizing feeling tone of gratitude and thanksgiving and pure recognition that life is for me and never against me and that life is everywhere. I feel totally connected with this divine presence and I speak the vibratory word for each being that's listening to me right now, setting them free from restriction and limitation I speak the word for each being, knowing that this word is a law of elimination that would hinder, delay, destruct, or deny the fullness of life from expressing through these beings right now. And that they see it now. The word is spoken for their success beyond reason, beyond logic. 
their success beyond what they could even imagine now begins to take hold in their life. And everything begins to work together for their individual and collective good. I see it. I give thanks for it. I know it is so. I feel it in my bones. And I release this word knowing that it cannot and will not return void, but it must return fulfilled thereof. It's returned already. These beings are free, embracing their sacred yes to the grand vision of their life. And for this, I do give thanks. And I let it be now and forever. And so it is. Amen. <clears throat> Now, slowly open your eyes and take just a, a moment to write down any key phrases, any key things you've seen where your vision is concerned, whether it's a feeling, an impulse, a full-on vision, a sacred sign or a symbol or a sound. Write it down. It may not make sense now, but it will later. Write it down. Write down to the best of your ability what you must become now, where you must grow. Write down what you already have in your house. Write down what you're willing to let go of. It no longer serves you anymore. Let me just tell you that everyone is different some people are more visual, they see things. Some people are auditory, they hear things. Some people are very kinesthetic, they feel things. Some people are very intuit intu intuitive, they catch things, they're able to intuit it without a feeling. Some people and many people are a combination of everything. They kind of feel it, they kind of see it, they hear it. And if nothing came through for you at this time, that's okay. You're just planting seeds. And what you may discover, what many people discover, is that it doesn't happen in the formal vision setting. It happens in a dream when they're about to fall asleep or sometimes they're daydreaming or sometimes they're doing something else and a vision will come into their mind because they set something in motion through the life visioning process. So what I want you to do is become a student of life visioning. I want you to practice it on a regular basis as you practice sacred meditation, as you practice uh, affirmative prayer, as you practice stating your affirmations. I want you to become a student of life visioning. So this becomes a regular part of your spiritual practice so that you'll begin to become sensitive to the still small voice. There's so much power in you. There's so much brilliance in you. There's so much love in you. There's so much success waiting to express through you because this spirit never made a meaningless act, never did a do-over, never repeated itself. You are a unique expression of infinite potential and you're here to flesh it out. You're here to bring it out of yourself, to participate in your own unfolding. So remember, remember this and keep writing things down as they come to you and keep practicing the life visioning. It's my joy to, to support you in your spiritual growth, development, and unfoldment, which continues forever. Yes, peace and blessings. Thank you.